Hey guys, so on this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're kicking off 2020 in a big way. I'm talking about why I like working with nylon filament for certain projects over say PETG or PLA, and also be giving you guys some good pointers as to how to work with the stuff. So let's dive in. So first of all, nylon filament does not behave, nor act, nor should be treated the same as say a PLA or a PTG filament. But with that being said, the main reason why I like working with it, despite the fact that it needs some special handling, which we'll touch on in a little bit, is mostly because nylon filament offers certain features and capabilities that regular filaments don't. And the main thing is durability. Nylon, if properly printed, can make for some incredibly tough prints. And that's the reason why I'm actually working on switching over all of my camera equipment to being printed in nylon over originally being printed in PLA, just because I was having a lot of durability issues with it in PLA. Not so much heat related, but just literally durability. Over time, the camera rig would get beat up a lot, see a bit of, you know, bouncing around in the backpack, the back of my car, going to events. And I notice over time, parts of it would actually start to break down. So for that reason, I've decided to switch over to nylon for my components because it makes them a whole heck of a lot tougher. Now that being said, nylon definitely has some properties about it that make it a bit trickier to print with. Depending upon which grade you're using, I personally prefer Tallman's 910 alloy, which requires about a 260 to 265 degrees Celsius printing range. So already right there, you should not be using it with a PTFE in the melt zone hot end. You definitely need an all metal setup for it. So that's gonna provide some challenges right there for people. Also, you throw in the fact that nylon likes to soak up a lot of moisture in the process of being printed or just sitting out so it needs to be properly stored and properly dried that being said though once you figure out how to print nylon it's actually very very simple and i want to extend a huge thank you to tom over at tom and 3d who sat down on the phone with me for a little bit and just gave me a whole laundry list of tips and tricks and just pointers for working with nylon to make your experience as good as possible because let's face it when you get nylon to work properly stuff's amazing. When you get nylon not working properly, you want to check the stuff out the window and never touch it again in your life. I'm speaking on personal experience there. Very first time I tried printing with nylon, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And it was not exactly a very enjoyable experience. But after I gained some more experience with it and got better at it, finally, it was like, hey, you know what, this actually makes a heck of a lot more sense. So let's dig in. Number one, nylon should not be treated like regular printing filament. That is both for the print specs, print speed, and also for the material handling, mostly storage. Now when it comes to the print specs, what Tom recommends, and I've got it here on my handy list, is keeping the speed to 40 millimeters a second or below. Um, a 0.2 to 0.22 layer height is a good number to shoot for on a 0.4 nozzle. And any no nozzle size is larger than that, do not exceed a 0.32 layer height because of the viscosity of nylon. It does not handle really high layer heights very well like other materials can. So regardless of the nozzle size, don't go past 0.32 layers. You might just want to even stick with whatever you were running before, that's up to you. Also because of the viscosity, you're gonna to want to up the flow to 104% and your retraction is going to need to be about three to four millimeters at 20 millimeters a second. Now there's a caveat to this and I'll touch on this later with drawing but if you're able to get your nylon dry enough you can actually print it without needing any retraction and you can get very good quality prints. If there's any little wispies or things like that they clean off very easily with a razor so it's not that big of a deal. Now first layer height and bed adhesion are critical, so they're getting their own second topic here. Now for the build plate surface, you can't print this straight on the glass. It will melt itself into the glass and literally pull chunks of glass up out of your bed. You don't want to do that. So you're going to want to run, if you're running straight on glass, you're going to want to run Elmer's glue all, but you got to make sure that you clean the glass really, really well. 
By cleaning the glass, I don't mean just spraying it down with alcohol and then just wiping it down with a cloth and calling it done. You want to spray it down and clean it down with high proof alcohol and or acetone a couple of times, but note that those tend to leave a film behind. So you're then going to want to come back and use a Windex like product, a window cleaner to really get it truly squeaky clean. And that's not a joke. You want this glass as clean as possible. Then you can apply the Elmer's glue all and heat the bed to about 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. This is a good sweet spot that keeps the glue all at a nice sticky state where the nylon will literally just bond to it, but it won't be either too cold or too hot, which causes other problems. If you're like me and you're running a PEI sheet on your machine, you can run glue stick on it, but you're going to want to crank the bed up to about 80 degrees Celsius. Now the third option, and this is if somebody really wants to run nylon 24 seven, or you got the budget for it, is to use a Gerolite print surface. And I will have the link to that in the video description. This works really, really well. You just clip it on top of the glass bed and print away with it. Now, that being said, when you're using this, you want to make sure that you let the build plate cool completely before you move on. And I should also mention, you're gonna to wanna to run this at about 50 to 55 degrees C as well. If you wait for it to cool completely, the prints pretty much just pop right off the surface. And according to Tom, it can last almost indefinitely. And there, there's a couple caveats to the temperature. If you're doing tiny prints, you can probably get away with almost no heating because there's gonna be very little surface area. But if you're doing really large prints that have really large surface area, you might wanna bump the temperature up to about 80 degrees Celsius to give it a better shot. But as always, just wait for it to cool completely and it should just pop right off and give you a nice, clean, shiny surface on the bottom. Now, the last thing is dehydration. And this requires its own special category as well, just because this is so critical to working with your nylon. Getting it to stick is not very hard. Getting it to print really is not very hard, but getting it to stay dry is about the hardest part because I can speak from experience, just ambient humidity. I can take a dry spool, leave it out for a couple of hours and it will have sucked up enough moisture that I can get a print out of it, but it's popping and sizzling and it's effectively popcorning your filament as it's coming out the nozzle. The moisture in there is expanding really large. You're going to get a rough surface. You're not going to have a very strong print. You have stringing like crazy. You could run all the retraction in the world that you want. It's going to make absolutely no difference. It's absolutely imperative that you keep the nylon as dry as possible. Now, Tom's recommendation is to take a filament dryer or a dehydrator, whatever you have lying around, and put on the bottom a couple of energized and what I mean by energized is you've got rid of the existing moisture in there silica gel packets on the bottom then put the filament in there so as the air is blowing through the silica gel is pulling out the moisture and if you run this for about 8 to 12 hours at between 50 to 65 degrees celsius you can drop the moisture content of the filament low enough that theoretically if all goes well you can actually do prints without even needing retraction because there's not going to be really any expansion inside the nozzle caused by moisture. That's where the viscous nature of nylon comes in handy. Oh, and another note that I forgot to put in with the dehydration of the filament is it's a really good idea, even when you get a fresh spool of the filament, to take the time to dehydrate it before you use it. You don't want to find out partway through a print that it was wet. Commercial injection molding or filament making companies will literally take their feedstock, their pellets of whatever they got in, dehydrate it down to a very, very low amount of humidity in the material and then send it through their process. And the reason why is because you want to make sure that it is going to be as dry as possible for consistency's sake. Same thing with your nylon filament. You don't want to trust the silica gel packet that was in there that probably soaks up moisture slower than the nylon can to have kept things dry in there. Lots of his commercial customers will literally take a spool straight from the bag, drop it in the dehydrator, dehydrate it, and then use it. I do the same process because let's face it, nobody likes wet nylon. It's just a pain to work with. So that being said, I hope that helps you guys a little bit with knowing how to work with nylon. I'm gonna conclude the video with me showing a couple of use applications for it and also a video of Tom 
taking the Alloy 910 and literally driving it through a 2 before. I'm not kidding, this stuff is really that strong if you print with it correctly. And I hope you guys found this useful. I personally feel like nylon is one of those more advanced materials that once you figure it out, heck, it makes all the difference in the world. But if you don't know what you're doing with it, you're going to fight yourself the whole way. Take some experience there too. So, see you guys here later on Make It With Calvin.